Greetings, esteemed students of astrology, to another intriguing episode of The Lily Lectures, the podcast where we dive deep into the timeless wisdom of Christian astrology and its practical applications. I am your guide, William Lilly, and today we'll be exploring the secrets behind determining who will fare best in a lawsuit and how to assess the success of partnerships. So grab your horary charts and let's embark on this celestial journey. Our first topic today is a matter that concerns many, and that is the outcome of legal battles. Astrology, as you know, can offer insights beyond the mundane, and it can be a guiding light in times of legal turmoil. Let's begin. If the Lord of the Ascendant and Seventh are in angular houses, neither shall win. If one of them is joined to a malefic planet in a Caden house, that party shall be defeated. If both are joined to malefic planets, both parties will be defeated in the legal matter or suffer significant harm. If one is strong and the other is weak, and the strong one is not cadent or joined to a malefic planet, and the weak one is ill dignified, or in a weak position in the chart, such as not being in its own house, exaltation, or with a good planet, then the stronger party in the chart will overcome. A planet that is moderately strong may waver in its hopes of victory or defeat, particularly when we examine questions related to wars and kingdoms. In such cases, a planet is considered more potent in its exaltation than in its own house, while in other questions, the opposite holds true. Moving on to our next inquiry, assessing the success of partnerships. Be it business collaborations or romantic unions, astrology can guide us in understanding their potential outcomes. To gauge the prospects of a partnership, we look to the first and seventh houses. When good planets grace these houses, favorable outcomes are likely. The duration of this partnership depends on the Lord of the Seventh. If a good planet resides there, expect the partnership to form in the same year. Now, compatibility between the Lords of the Ascendant and the Seventh House is crucial. If they are compatible, the parties involved are likely to get along smoothly, but if not, frequent disagreements may arise. Finally, let's uncover who will fare better in a partnership. In this case, we scrutinize the Lords of the Ascendant and the Seventh House based on their dignities. If the significators of the Querent possess better dignities than those of the Quesited, the Querent will take the lead and succeed. Conversely, if negative indications prevail, the party whose significator resides in a cadent house may experience the worst outcomes, and if anyone's significator is exalted, they're destined for success. And now, to determine where the greatest benefit will be obtained, we look to the second and eighth houses, their rulers, and the planets within them. The second house represents the querent's finances, while the eighth house signifies the wealth of their companion or partner. If both are in good shape, both parties will benefit. If both are afflicted, expect losses for all. And if one is favorable while the other is not, the one with the positive influence will gain while the other may face losses. And that wraps up another episode of the Lily Lectures. Remember, the stars have wisdom to offer, and astrology is our tool to unlock it. So until next time, keep exploring the cosmos within and around you. I am William Lilly, and this is Christian Astrology.